Hi guys, I hope you are all keeping well. Um, still in lockdown here in the UK and uh, the weather outside is shocking. I took the dog for a walk. It was I should have wore swimming trunks. It's that wet outside, but um, so I've had a bit of time today. I've been doing quite a bit of tying, um, mostly buzzers, and I just thought I'd um, set up for a live stream. It does take a little bit of time to do the setting up, so. Um, you know, actually streaming itself is no problem. It's the setting up the camera and the laptop and all the bits and bobs, and then you know, threatening the kids with their life to keep the noise down while I'm doing it. <laughs> so just another minute, and uh, then we'll make a start. Okay, that's um, two o'clock, so I'm going to make a start. So what you see in the vise is uh, one of the flies I've been tying this morning. And basically it's a simple Barker's buzzer. Now you may well see quite a lot of um, fancy buzzers on Facebook and, and YouTube. And, you know, I'm not adverse to tying some uh, fancy buzzers myself. But when it comes down to just fishing, this buzzer's hard to beat. It's um, very simple and it's just super effective. Now I have it in two variations, you'll notice the one in the vise is actually tied on a straight shanked hook and it has orange cheeks. The other one I like to use um, is the curved hook and uh, as you can see here this one's got the sunburst cheeks and I tend to stick to the fluorescent orange or the sunburst as far as cheeks go for this buzzer and um, the one I'm going to tie, I'm going to tie on a Hanak H260 barbless hook at size 10. I've got one out of the packet already and I'll just clamp that into the vise. Not happy with that hook placement. Just best get happy. Hi Stevie, how you doing pal? Hi Jane from the living room. <laughs> okay, so I've got the hook in the vise then and the thread I'm going to be using for this fly and I tend to use this for all my buzzer patterns, whether they're black, olive, you know, whatever colour I'm deciding on. But this is UTC, you can't see the label because I've got this stupid bobbin holder on. But basically it's at 70 denier and it's in black. Now I'm not going to add any wax to the thread because uh, I'm going to add quite a lot of resin after I've uh, finished tying this fly up. So I'm just going to catch on in behind the eye and use my rat's tail to get a nice even body of thread down. I'm going to bring that all the way back to approximately where a barb would be. And then I can remove my waist. Now, sorry, I'm just adjusting my bobbin. I was playing about with it earlier, and now it's getting right on my nerves. It's not uh, not playing the game. Okay, so for all my buzzers for fishing, I like to use a natural quill, and uh, the one I like to use is the Polish quills. Now. People will say they strip their own and that's great, um, but what I find is, what I want with my buzzers is that banding that you've seen in the one in the vise. So the banding of the, the strip peacock herl is really important to me, and uh, I can't seem to find that anywhere except with the Polish quills. So I've already got one taken off here, and I'm going to dress that up to the hook and catch it in. Now at this point I'm taking extra care to make sure I get touch and turns and with UTC I want it to open out so I'm giving it a twist anti-clockwise on the bobbin holder just to flatten out my thread and that'll give you that nice smooth body on your buzzer. I'm going to come all the way up to the thorax area and I like to put a little bit of a taper into my buzzers so I'm just going to again give my, bo my bobbin a little 
twist anti-clockwise I'm going to come back down not right to the bottom this time and I'm going to come up again to the thorax area now I'm content that I've got that taper in there quite difficult to see on the camera but it is there next I'm going to come all the way up to the eye and when I get to the eye I'm going to put another three or four turns in and the reason for that is I'm going to use the rotary function on my vise to turn the peacock curl couldn't get a hold of it there it's like I've been drinking or something so I've got the vise set so I can rotate it and what I'm going to do is put one turn on the bare shank the next turn comes on to the thread base and then I can just and this is a very quick way of doing it if you've got a rotary function then I would suggest that you start um, doing it like this it's much quicker than doing it by hand and then as I've come up to the thorax them extra turns I put in at the front is now undone and it's brought my thread over to meet my quill and I'm going to catch that in just with an overhand turn and then lock it down then I can pull that away so far so good let's see who's on hiya Chris how's things two Chris's hello Chris's uh, hi Jim when a buzzer is moving through the water it it is straight and when it is stationary in the surface film it is curved hence either style of imitation yep Jim I, I tend to agree with you and I was going to come on to how I fish the buzzers now um, what I tend to do is if I'm moving my buzzers I am using these uh, these straight patterns or if I'm fishing the washing line I tend to be using the, the straight shanked patterns now if I'm fishing the buzzers on a bung rig I tend to fish the, the curved hooks um, and, and I tend to add a lot more weight now the buzzers, both the buzzers I've just shown you there they're not quite finished and uh, I'll explain a bit more as we, we carry on with this fly so as I said at the start of the, uh, the session I used two types of biot uh, I used the fluorescent sunburst or I use the hot orange and they're the two biots and these, these ones are comp candy really vivid colours uh, I, I like using them so for the purpose of this one I'm going to use the hot orange now I've already taken uh, let me just show you the the goose biots they're nice and long easy to work with and these are the hot orange I've already taken two off and separated them now some boys will bring in both of them at the same time but they're the advanced boys I'm just going to tie mine one at a time like so and then I'll bring the other one at the same and I'm just using the tip of the point here as a guide and I want that up near the eye of the hook so the biots will be quite uniform yeah as I say I, I like a fancy buzzer as much as the next man and uh, I've certainly tied a few on the channel and I'll stick a little link up in the information bar I'm not sure which way it is but there's a little bar appears at the top of your screen when you're watching a YouTube video and I'll put uh, a link up to one of my fancier buzzers on there if you're that way inclined I'm just going to flatten the thread out and continue to build my thorax now at the head here I like to get a nice sort of rugby ball shaped head I watched uh, one of Davy McPhail's really old videos the other day there and it was a it was it was a fancy buzzer sure enough uh, and uh, I think he was using flexi floss to tie it but what I really liked about it was the shortness of the head uh, it, looked, it had enough varnish on it that it looked like it was going to sink like a stone but uh, I did like that style and of course it would be remiss of me 
to be tying buzzers and not mention Al Owen's buzzer, um, which in my humble opinion is the only buzzer you'll ever need on uh, any place like Rutland or Grafham. That's a little looky. Hi Nigel, not sure if it's me Lindsay, but the fly looks a bit out of focus. Yeah, it's you Nigel. <laughs> Hi Keith, how's things? You missed the start. Ah, oh, that was the most important bit, mate. Oh. <laughs> uh, the hook I'm using, mate, is a Hanak H260 barbless hook at size 10. It's a straight shank. But, Keith, the Hanak hooks uh, tend to be, like, one size down from the old Kamazan hooks. Hiya, Tom. How's things? Hi Chris, yep, I've, I've always found um, real drama with finding good quills but every time I've got Polish quills, and I've tried lots of different ones but I've always come back to these Polish quills because I've just never had any problems with them and the other thing I like about them, when you're tying with them they don't snap off, they, um, they're easy to work with you don't have to soak them in water or lick them with your tongue or anything they're out of the packet they're on the hook, and, and, and that's what I like. I mean, I used to spend hours preparing materials and stuff now, but, uh, you know, I'm, get, I'm getting old, and it, life's too short. So I, I like things to work right out of the packet. So where my bias now, I'm going to bring them forward. And what I like to do is bring the bias in line with the eye of the hook. Both at the same time. Get a couple of turns with your thread. Just make sure everything's where you want it to be sitting. And then you can really clamp down on them bias. Keeping tension on your thread, you can then twist away the bias. And it will come off. No problem at all. And you can tidy up that front a little bit. And come in with your whip finish tool. Now essentially, that's the fly tying part of this video over. But obviously, the fly in the vise looks very little like this sleek, pristine fly that we started off with. So how do we get it like that? Now, there's, you know, I'm sure this will start a right proper argument. Some people, and I know Al Owen does this for a fact because I've spoke to him about it. So what Al does, and he ties buzzers constantly throughout the year to sell because, it, you know, he's, he's a professional guide. And uh, in, the, in the winter months, he fills up his time by tying flies for sale. So he will tie flies to this stage. And then what he'll do is have them all in lines something akin to this, only imagine like this, but with hundreds and hundreds of buzzers at this stage. And then he will spend days putting one coat on each fly, and then he will give it 24 hours to dry, and then he'll put another coat on the next day, and he would give it six coats, and that's why his buzzers are pristine. But uh, I haven't got the patience for that, and so what I do is I cheat a little bit by using Solaris but there's a bit of a knack to putting this on let me just have a wee look at the comments I see them pinging up hi Stuart could you add a flashback to the thorax area something like Opal yep absolutely so um, I need to go back a few stages as I finished wrapping in the quill I would simply tie in my flash thorax flash and then it would come over and it can be effective, but more often than not, what I'm showing you here is, is just as good on its own when they're on the buzzer. Hi Nicole. Um, the Polish quills are short, but you don't really need... Uh, it depends on what size of buzzer you're tying, I suppose. But I only really tie them to sort of size 10, uh, at the biggest, so I find them adequate for my needs. But uh, yeah, they are quite short. Slightly out of focus, but still watchable. Hmm. Let me have a look at that one.
Is that any better? Mm, I think it was probably all right actually. Anyway, sorry about that if it is slightly out of focus. And Nigel, apologies, I thought you were just drunk. Hi Stevie, aye, the Polish quills are grand. I do have one on the, uh, Nicole, I have uh, one on the, the channel called the Barker Buzzer and uh, it's it's pretty much the only, the only buzzer I'll fish if I'm in a comp. The Barker Buzzer. Solaris for me with maybe a final coat of varnish. Well Jim, funny you should say that because we're just about to come on to the, uh, the, the varnishing it up. So basically I like to invert the vise initially and uh, when, before you even start, make sure you've got a feather that you've stripped away and it's nice and soft because what you don't want to do is fill up your eye and I can see that that's not quite right in the vise. And I think I know why it's going out of focus actually because I'm using the rotary function on the vise, I'm not bringing it to a stop just uh, where it was focused but that looks pretty focused to me I've got to say have you both been drinking maybe that's what it is <laughs> okay so Solaris now the temptation of course is to get a big blob of resin onto your brush and just coat the fly and uh, I, that would be a mistake just because you're using resin, it's not an excuse to be overzealous with it. So I just like to do it very slowly, and there's a couple of reasons for that. I think it dries better, a thinner layer. And also I can control the amount of varnish going onto the buzzer. So there's a first coat. I can come in with my pen. Now, I should have mentioned before I hit it with the, the UV pen, I did check that my eye was clear. And if it wasn't clear, sometimes the resin does slip into the eye. Before I zapped it, I would have passed this through it just to clear the eye. So I'll just finish zapping that. And this is the, uh, for me anyway, this is the time consuming bit. Once I get started on buzzers, I can rattle them out fairly quickly. But um, the vanishing part is, uh, takes a little longer. So that's first coat on and dry. The second time I come at it with a resin, I'm going to give the whole fly another coat. Just check my eye again before I zap it. And you can see it's now starting to look more like the one we started with in the vise. Now, Al Owens, I have had the, the luck to, actually Sean Hanlon gave me a couple of Al Owens buzzers the last time we managed to have a spring match, which seems like a lifetime ago. But um, they're so good. Um, great flies, but I'll ties mostly on barbed hooks and uh, I tend not to fish them so much. So there's the second coat, let's have a wee look. Tom really enjoying the vice, uh, love the rotary function, it's really, really great to um, be able to do that with the quills and some of the dubbing brushes I make up, I find it dead handy. Definitely out of focus. I don't think it is pal maybe I'm just mad but it looks in focus to me right sorry Nigel tie mostly tens myself but got caught out last year in March at Toff Newton well I tie 10, 12 and 14 and, and I've not felt any need 
to uh, go smaller than a size 14 but as I say I'm mostly tying on Hanak hooks and uh, they are tend to be a lot smaller than your Camazans and, and other makes of hook <laughs> Starsky that vice is uh, already covered that you've not seen the base plate it's covered in resin and glue no Chris the um, the, the natural natural Polish quills that I'm using uh, I, I, have, I do use uh, other other quills that have been dyed, but I just find that the, the natural ones are the best. A mallard and claret spider. You know what, Dewey? I think I have, but you would have to search it up on the channel. Yeah, Chris, I'm, I'm looking at my little screen and it's, it's telling me that uh, my, my fly's in focus, but I am moving the vice about a little bit and... Uh, it may well be that when I'm moving it to certain parts, it's not in focus. Afternoon, Ben. Hope you're well. Right, so, next coat. Next and last coat, I might add, of resin. So, again, I've got a little bit on my brush. I'm going to come in at the thorax area. This time, though, I'm not going to take my brush much more than three turns past the the quill there I don't I want it to start tapering up now and I don't want much resin down near the butt end of the fly so again I'll just check the eye of my hook looks okay is it maybe when the flies upside down it's yeah when the fly's upside down it's slightly out of focus because it's not at the focus point but when I turn it back round it should should be sorted so there's the straight one all done and if I can find, I've got some curved hooks here. I'll do one of the curved ones because it's not a, it's not really um, a complicated fly to tie. I think the the thing with this fly is the finish. You know, if you can get the uh, the varnishing part right, it just looks really nice to the eye. I've always found it very effective for fishing. So what I've used is a Hanak H2, nope, that's the wrong box. A Hanak H310 barbless hook. It's a heavy wire hook and it's a much thicker gauge than uh, the straight hook I was using. Although that was a heavy wire, this is thicker. And, and that's why I prefer fishing the curved hooks on the bung. Uh, I think they've got a lot more weight to them and uh, they sink through the water like a stone. Let's have a look at Curved or straight hooks for buzzers? Uh, both, Ben. I like both. And uh, as I've just said, I prefer the curved ones for static fishing and the straight hooks if I'm going to be moving the flies at all. Cutting booby eyes. <laughs> uh, yes, Paul. The, the Solaris UV bone dry comes with a little brush. It's one of the uh, the main reasons I continue to use the resin. It's it's superb and, and when it runs out I'll, I'll get myself another bottle or I will pour whatever resin I do buy into that bottle so that I can continue to use the brush, it's really handy. The bigger tubes of the Solaris, I've not, you know what, the bone dry is the only Solaris I've ever used Ben so um, I don't really know what the other ones are like. I'll just check that's in focus. Yeah, look, you've got me paranoid now, boys. Jeez, okay. Same thread. Again, no wax, and what I'd like to do is just run my thumbnail through the thread, because I want it quite flat, and I want to catch it on in behind the eye. And then using the rat's tail, I'm just going to come down. shank of the hook now you'll get various uh, arguments on you know how big 
how far do you come down? I uh, I don't have a set point really. I uh, I just kind of guesstimate it, and I think that's good enough for government work. And I'll just grab another one of the, the Polish quills. out of the the bag there. Now I recall once or twice actually I'm just going to clean off a wee bit more of the the uh, you see there's a little bit of the fluff left I'll just take a wee bit so I've got a little bit left and I'm going to catch that in at the end. Another way so generally the traditional way of fishing bother if there is such a thing tradition yeah Traditional way of fishing buzzers is um, probably with a floating line, three or four flies on a 20, 22 foot cast. You haul it out and you hang on, and uh, the takes can be absolutely ferocious when you're fishing like that, especially them them early season buzzer feeding fish. You know, uh, April into May, it, it, the takes can be phenomenal fishing buzzers, and uh, there's not much else that will will beat that kind of excitement for takes. So again, I brought my thread up near the thorax. I'm going to get several wraps. Sorry, I've got an itchy nose. Good morning, Jeff. I hope the weather's better in Tennessee than it is in the UK, because it's pretty poor here. Stuart, curved versus straight hook debate. Has anyone tried tying on a sedge hook? I find Kamazan B420 gives a very nice intermediate shape between curved and straight. Stuart, I haven't tried that, but um, it is a thought. I have got a, a pupa hook that Hanak do that I've thought might well suit buzzers very well, but I've not tried it. And like you say, it's a kind of cross of a, a curved and straight shanked hook. Tiny varnish bottles with brushes on the interweb and use them for my resin and varnish. Ah, good stuff, Chris. You might, if, if you've got the link handy, you might want to share it with folks. I'm sure they'd appreciate the tip. So I'm just going to grab the quill and my hackle pliers. And Ben, if you're still watching, I bet you're praying that this slips out so that I buy one of them Cortarelli fancy hackle pliers that you're trying to flog me every time I speak to you. <laughs> I might be tempted. I might be tempted. I'll see. It's a wee bit different on the curved hook because obviously with a straight shank, you're getting it to go pretty much in a straight line. It's easy. With a curved hook, it takes a little bit more concentration, but it's still a great way of uh, applying the uh, the quill to the buzzer. As I get up near the thorax area, again my threads now come to meet come to meet the uh, quill, and I can catch that in. and remove that. Now for a wee change I'll use the, if I can find one of the sunburst goose biots. And I'm just, all I'm doing is, is a, you pop them open and you just want to select one. I, what I usually do if I'm tying a load of these I'll pick out at the same time, if I'm tying, say, five, I'll, I'll do ten of these and have them ready at the side so that I'm not faffing about like this. But uh, I wasn't quite sure how it was going to go, so uh, I only prepared the one buzzer to tie. So again, I'm going to come in using the point. I'm going to use that as a guide, dress it up to the eye, and catch it into place. Then the other one. comes in at the side and 
Right, you can trap them in. Now, thorax size, there's a, there's a, obviously, people uh, have their own idea. I like to have it about two eighths of an inch for the eye of the hook, quarter of an inch. Um, and, and that does me for thorax. Some people like bigger, some people like much smaller and tapered heads. Just build my thorax up, takes a little bit of time. And uh, funnily enough, I was uh, when I was on Facebook this morning, I got up, done the morning chores, dishwasher, dog walked, you know, various, read a little couple of chapters of my book. I thought, oh, I'll go and try and tie some flies. I had no intention of uh, doing a live stream today. I thought, oh, I'm going to have a day off. But I started tying these buzzers and uh, I rarely tie more than uh, one or two of the same pattern. I get bored very easily, but when I was tying these, I suddenly found I had about 16 of them on my desk. Um, all I'm doing now is bringing the goose bites forward. And I'm going to catch them in. A couple of tight turns. Keeping tension on the thread. You've got to keep tension on your thread. If you try and do this without that tension, you're going to lose your um, your goose bites. They'll ping back, and you have to do all that again. Unwrap it all. So I'll just get this finished off before I have another wee look at the screen. And uh, there we go. Are there any buzzers that are weighted or those are not considered buzzers? Um, no, I think some people put tungsten beads on and various other beads. It's always sunny in Scotland, Jim. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. No, no, the weight can be added to buzzers. You could put a lead underbody in if you want. I know some folks that have done that. I know some competition anglers that have done that. Mm. Uh, buzzers on a DI-7. No, that is absolutely not a myth. It's uh, It really is effective, especially, I recall um, the dog days of summer at Buell Reservoir and up by the tower in the dam area, Ben, with, you know, guys on DI-8s. They'd try and cast the DI as far as they could, pay out what they couldn't cast, and at the bottom would be a 10 foot cast with three buzzers on, and uh, some phenomenal fishing to be had doing that. Right, Jeff, that's a good question. So, if the brush on the Solaris starts to get stiff, Oh, sorry, you're giving the advice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Funnily enough, I did that the other day. Sometimes uh, on the Solaris, the, the bottle gets covered in gunk and various bits and bobs around the side, and when you start bringing it out to coat your fly, it, it's like a powdery white colour. But the, the solution's simple, as uh, Jeff has said there. You simply put it in a cup of boiling water, and it immediately goes back to clear, usable resin. It's great stuff. Um, Chris, I wouldn't thin the varnish down, as I just um, said about the Solaris. I'm not sure about normal varnish, but I think if you put it in a uh, an old cup with some boiling water, that'll, that'll thin it for you. Was I in the Remy, Chris? No, I was in the infantry. I've never been in the Remy. I, I do work for the... Um, I do work for the Army Medical Services now. Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh at that, Chris. I'm laugh laughing at Rob Sosby's comments. Do you like my nails, Rob? <laughs> Good to see you, mate. I, I hope you're well. Right, so I'm going to uh, apply the first coat of varnish to this curved buzzer. I'll just invert my vise again. I always like to do the underside first. And again, I'm not going to go mad with a big dollop of varnish.
just work it round. Some people like to use a needle um, to to move the resin, and, and I can see why. You're probably getting quite a lot of uh, a lot of control with a a cocktail stick or a needle. But this little brush is, I find, it's ideal for this. So get your first coat on. Again, I've probably just at the maximum amount of resin I'd like on the fly at that point. Uh, you do need to uh, work fairly quickly with the resins. I don't know what that smoke coming off it is. Let me start a wee fire there. Yeah. And already I feel like I've put too much resin on this fly initially. So I'm going to give it a bit extra time while I zap it. And then, oh, it's a little Uh, I've not used the Vernard's um, varnish or thinners. Uh, before um, the advent of UV resins, I just used to use Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails, which is like a fingernail varnish, and that, that works a treat. Yeah, Paul... Um, yeah, I've had some fabulous days at Buell. I remember a, a, a very memorable deal with, uh, I don't know if you know Vince Brooks. He used to be a, a ranger there and, and me and him had, had a field day um, fishing buzzers on DI-8s. Uh, unfortunately, Buell's not the water it once was, I don't think. Right, let's get another coat on. And I've caught a wee hair into my varnish brush there and I can see where I've I've not quite got that right that first coat and it is going to affect the way I varnish the rest of this fly because you can always do a regain you know if you've made a mess of it I'm going to ignore the rest of the the body just concentrate my efforts just in behind the thorax is where I've mucked it up and uh, I've lost a bit of the bulk there. Another great way of fishing buzzers actually is um, the washing line method and I've had some absolutely amazing days fishing buzzers on the washing line and uh, especially at Rutland can be so effective if the fish are cruising at a sort of three to four feet down and uh, you know a fab or a booby on the point with three buzzers up and fishing it on a very slow intermediate you can have a really good sport very versatile just going to try and add the tiniest bit of resin just in behind there Try and create, just trying to save this fly axe because I've made a bit of a hash of it. Trying to talk and uh, <laughs> and tie at the same time. I'm a bit like a monkey, really. I can only stick to one task. Okay. Now, as I said at the start, the, the buzzers I showed you at the start. They're not finished, so uh, what do I mean by that? Well, they look pretty shiny, they look pretty good, but I'm actually out of Sally Hansen's hard as nails, and what I'll do is uh, all these buzzers are, are ready to, to go. So I get them to that stage that you saw. Uh, all nice and shiny, and then they'll get a couple of coats of Sally Hansen uh, to finish them off and I don't know if it makes any difference I could probably keep going with the Solaris to be perfectly honest but uh, 
I just I've always done it I think it uh, adds a little bit more weight and you know other than looking good you know these buzzers with all that um, with the resin with the uh, just put that in the vise with the resin and the, you know the coats of Sally Hansen take the binos off um, it adds a little bit of weight so the fly sinks really quickly now there's obviously other buzzer patterns that you don't want to sink as quickly depending on where the fish are in the water but certainly for uh, for deep water stuff you you can't go far wrong with this pattern right I think I've slavered on uh, long enough folks and I should let you get back to your Saturday afternoons smoke is coming from the exothermic nature of the resin curing see exothermic I like that sound like it's a good word some torches have a pulse setting because I think if the resin gets hot it may not cure as well as it should oh, that's interesting Stuart I, uh, I actually use a it's not a UV pen this is a uh, let me see if I can get it on the, the camera and it's been pointed out to me already it's a laser pen so you've got to be quite careful not to point it at your peepers but um, it, it does tend to cure the resin bone dry you know once uh, once it's been on there it dries solid thanks Jeff Yeah, Paul, it was, um, I mean, that was a long time ago. The Army used to have a match with uh, Buell Bridge Fly Fishing Club and uh, we'd turn up every year. But I think ever since it went to the sort of any method um, way of life that it kind of fell away and I think most of the people that remember the old Army versus Buell Bridge match uh, will, will remember it fondly. Uh, I learned a lot, a lot of my fishing skills from some of the Buell Bridge anglers, uh, Peter Tomlinson, uh, Vince Brooks, Adrian Nisi, you know, absolutely phenomenal anglers and, uh, you know, it can't help but rub off on you if you're sharing a boat with them. I'm glad you're enjoying your uh, your break, Chris. I hope the weather's not too bad. Right, take care, Jim. I'm going to get off my cell. Well, thanks very much for watching, folks. And uh, once I've sort of tidied up this stream, I'll, I'll post it up on the site. Take care, and I'll hope to see you all next time. Bye for now.